Do you ever get to wondering when you're singing one of them songs, do I do that? Do we really want to draw the earth? A lot of times we just sing the songs and we don't think about what they're saying. A lot of those songs that make you think if you really listen to them. Yeah. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into the scripture. <coughs> Father, I thank you again for this day. Lord, I thank you for these people that are gathered here. Lord, and I ask your blessings on them. Lord, we pray for those who aren't here. Pray, Lord, that you would work in their hearts. Lord, now as we look into your word, we pray, Father, that you would give us that, that you would have us to receive. Help us to hear with our hearts. To take in what you would have us to take in and to apply it. Lord, and to use it in the way that you intend for us to use it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin in the book of 1 John, in chapter 5. When somebody preaches at you and preaches at you and preaches at you, that all you've got to do is ask and it's yours. And you never see it. What does that do to your Christian walk? What does that do to your faith? Uh, it's going to take your faith and begin to scrunch it up. It's going to uh, take your Christian walk and slow it down. Uh, the Bible does say that. Exactly what I told you. The Bible does say that. But that's not all that it says. And I talked about it last week. And I kind of mentioned it this morning in Sunday school. we got to be careful how we hear. Not just what we hear. If I stand up here and I tell you and I preach all the time that all you got to do is ask and it's yours. All you got to do is ask and it's yours. All you got to do is ask and it's yours. And I keep telling you that and I keep telling you that and you keep hearing that and you keep hearing that and you start believing that and you ask and you don't get it. Why don't you get it? Because of what you heard. There's a difference. And I know I talked about this last week. 
but God's keeping me on it. There's a difference between what you hear and how you hear what you hear. I'll use the example again of Sunday school. As I said last week, I probably convinced a lot of people that the Catholic Church uh, was the, the great whore. <clears throat> probably convinced a lot of people of that if they weren't already. And why would you be convinced of that? Because of what you heard. But you know what you heard wasn't all of it. And that's a lot of the problem with what we hear out of the Word. It's not all of it. Mm -hmm. You have to take the Word in its entirety. You can't just pull a scripture out and say, whatever you ask for, it's yours. The Bible does say that. But that's not all that it says. And that's what I want to talk about. I truly believe from the bottom of my heart. I always have. Uh, but especially now, since God gave me this message this week, I believe. I truly believe that whatsoever I ask for, God will give it to me. God will do it if it's according to that word. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's the key. That's right. It's got to be according to that word. And what does that word say? How do I get my prayers answered? In 1 John chapter 5, I want to read your verses 14 and 15 first. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything, anything, according to his will, he hears us. So we know that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then it goes on and says, and if we know he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. You hear what that scripture says? First, if I ask anything according to God's will, He hears me. Secondly, if I ask anything according to His will and He hears me, what happens? I know I have the petitions that I desired of him. So first, what's the first condition of getting my prayer answered? In his will. It's got to be God's will. It has to be God's will. How do I know God's will? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> That book you got laying on your lap, that covers it. That covers it. Yeah, but, 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 I felt within my spirit, that could have been gas. <laughs> that book will never contradict what God speaks to your spirit. Right. If you believe that God spoke something to your spirit and it really wasn't gas, <laughs> check it out in that book. Make sure that it can be of God. That's right. Yeah. That's the first thing to getting a prayer answered, making sure you're in the will of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but listen, listen, Brad. If I do this and God does that, a really good thing's going to happen. Why wouldn't God want that to happen? Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's God. I'm not. He has his purposes. He has his reasons. He has his plans. That's right. Just because the outcome might be something that I think is good, other people might think good. If it's not in God's will, he's not going to do it. That's right. He's not going to answer. First and foremost, it has to be in the will of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Does God really have a will for every part of my life? Yes, he does. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you know what he said? I know the plans that I have for you. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. To give you an expected end. God has a place <coughs> he wants you to be. A thing he wants you to do. God has a plan for your life your entire life. Everything? Yes. All things work together for good. That's right. 
I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe in just chance. I believe in the life of a Christian. God directs. I really believe that. So in order, the first thing, in order to get my prayers answered, I have to be certain I'm in the will of God. That's right. And I preached this a while back, and I'm going to throw it in here. Sometimes the will of God ain't easy. That's right. Sometimes the will of God is hard. That's right. Sometimes the will of God hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this in there. You can ask God for anything. Jesus did. We'll go back to the garden. In my words, Jesus said, if you can do it, get me out of this. Yeah. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Right. I can ask God, Lord, I'd love to have that job. <laughs> Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Right. If you would prefer I stay here, I'll stay here. We have to make sure we're in God's will. And again, I want to make this clear. You can ask God for anything. He done already knows you want it. Mm -hmm. He knew Christ's anguish. He knew Christ didn't want to do that in the flesh. He knew that, but Christ still asked, if you can do it, get me out of this. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours. We can ask, but we have to understand God has a will for our lives. If, if it doesn't fit that will, this scripture doesn't apply. Listen again. We have, and this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then we know that if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petition we desire. <clears throat> it has to be in God's will. I've heard it preached many times in my life, and actually I heard it on the radio once this week. People who believe God has a perfect will and a permissive will. Mm -hmm. I don't. The will of God is nothing but perfect. It can't be anything but perfect. But there are people who will believe uh, that God will allow you to do things out of his will because he's permissive. God will let you make your own choices. Sure. God will let you do something outside of his will. But you know what you are when you're outside of his will? Uh, you're backslidden. Uh -huh. I mean, that's, you may not agree with me, but if you're not in the will of God, you're backslidden. Yeah. You're in danger. Yeah. You're in a bad place. That's not God's will for anybody to be there. So how can it be God's permissive will when God's will is that none should perish? When God's will is that all us uh, should love him and serve him and live righteous and holy, how can that be God's will of any kind? It's not. God has a plan. God has a purpose. You are a part of that. And for all God's plan and purpose to come about uh, is God's will. So in order for us to receive those things that we desire and those things that we ask for, uh, uh, it has to be in God's will. Let's look at another thing. Also in 1 John chapter 5, starting at verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now listen, if we are of God, and we love God, we keep his commandments, mm -hmm. correct? Now jump over to chapter 3 of 1 John, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments. So there's something else. If you want your prayers answered, it's got to be in the will of God, and you have got to be living right. Amen. We have got to 
Keep his commandments. We got to live this book. If we want our prayers answered, if we want to claim those promises that whatsoever we ask, he hears us, and we know if he hears us, we're going to get what we ask for. If we're going to claim the promises that said uh, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, then it's got to be according to this word. We've got to be in his will. We've got to be living right. We've got to be keeping his commandments. Listen to what he says. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First off, we get what we ask for because it's the will of God. Secondly, we get what we ask for because we live right. Because we keep the commandments, we live in his word, and we do the things that are pleasing to God. How many of us, and you don't have to raise your hand, how many of us did, did something this week that probably wasn't very pleasing to God? I did. I did. I probably do a couple things a day that really aren't pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. You know what? That voids the promise. That's right. Well, you expect me to live perfect? No, you can't live perfect. I expect you to live forgiven. There it is. <laughs> I would that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Sorry. Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. Right. You mean me doing something that wasn't pleasing to God is a sin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. I didn't kick a dog or push an old lady over or steal candy. If it's not pleasing to God, That's right. That's right. then you're out of the will of God. That's right. If you're out of the will of God, you need forgiveness to get back in the will of God. That's right. So if we want our prayers answered, it's got to be the will of God. That's right. We've got to be living that book mm -hmm. and doing the things that please God. That's right. And doing the things that please God doesn't just mean not doing something bad. That's right. You know what pleases God? When you glorify Him. Oh. You know what pleases God? When you praise Him. Amen. You know what pleases God? When you go up to somebody and say, let me tell you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not just not doing bad things. It is doing good things. Right. And how many of us spend a whole lot of time doing good things? Glorifying God, praising God, lifting God, uh, uh, spending time with God, meditating on God, telling people about Christ, helping an old lady across the street in the name of God, giving somebody a glass of water in the name of God. All those are good. Those are things that please God. If we want our prayers answered, these, this is how we have to live. Look, God is a good God. God is a merciful God. God is a loving God. He gives us so much stuff we don't deserve. That's right. Amen. We live haphazardly. We live however we want to live. We do what we want to do, and God still blesses us. What's the scripture say? He, uh, his mercies are new every morning. Daily he loadeth us with blessings, and he does. But in our lives... When there's those things that we, oh, we hunger for, we ache for, we, we really desire, oh, we really need to happen in our lives, and we want an answer to that prayer, there's a way to get it. That's right. The Bible tells us how we can get that answer to our prayer. If we keep God's commandments, if we are in God's will, uh, if we make sure of that, if we do those things, then he said, you will get what you ask for. And he puts it that plainly. Uh, that scripture I just read. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. That's pretty plain and to the point. Because we keep his command. Because we are in his will. Because we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Listen. God made a promise and God has never broke a promise and God will never break a promise. And he said in his word that if this is how we live and we ask things according to his will, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. 
And we can trust that and we can believe